Welcome to Bow Panel System. First, we execute the foundation where the building will be located. The foundation layer can be much narrower than in traditional buildings with obvious economic savings due to the lower weight of the bow panel system. Once the foundation is dry, the layout lines are marked in conformity with the position of the assembly of the corrugated bars. Next, the holes are made on both sides of the foundation layer where the staggered assembly bars are embedded. Once the single-sided mounting bars are installed, we are then ready to start attaching the panels. Subsequently, the assembly bars will be placed on the other side. We will start by placing the panels preferably starting at one corner of the building so that two panels are placed in square support of each other. We can assemble the panels one by one or in groups of three, four or five units. All corner junctions must be reinforced by angular meshes, both on the inside and on the outside. It is very important to correctly tie the panels to the foundation and to each other to guarantee the continuity of the meshes in all elements of the system. This operation can be carried out with automatic tools or simply with staples or wire ties. These unions will make the structure work as a monolithic element once the concrete has been projected. It is advisable to align and straighten the panels before they are tied to the foundation and to each other. The shoring operations can be carried out with inclined wooden or metal supports that will be fixed to the foundation. Steel square tubes or straight wooden braces can be used, which should be tied from the opposite side of the panel. Doors and windows can be opened once all the vertical walls have been assembled. This procedure demonstrates the flexibility of the system when making changes on site. All the vertices of door and window openings will be reinforced with flat steel mesh at 45 degree angles. There should be no overlap of more than two meshes over the original panel mesh for an adequate coating of the reinforcements and the concrete layer. The lightness and simplicity of bow panel system makes installation quick and easy, resulting in economic savings mainly due to the reduction of execution time. By getting a smaller section in the enclosure, we increase the user surface with respect to the built surface. Once all the vertical elements have been placed and tied, the angular meshes are placed where the floor and roof panels will later be supported. Also, at this stage, the layout of the stairs, ramps and landing areas must be carried out to leave the angular meshes in place for their subsequent adjustments. The pre-installation of the electricity and plumbing pipes will be carried out by using a hot air gun with which the channel will be made by compressing the polystyrene without generating any residue. The flexible pipes will be passed behind the steel mesh. The rigid pipes, as well as the distribution and mechanism boxes, will be placed by cutting the steel mesh. The projection of concrete onto the walls will begin on the opposite side to where the plumbing and alignment elements are located. Floating masters will be placed beforehand to define the thickness of the concrete layer. The projection of the first concrete layer will be applied in the form of successive horizontal cords from bottom to top, starting from the base of walls, covering practically the entire steel mesh of the panel. With the material still soft, it will be convenient to pass over it with a toothed trowel, leaving the area with a rough texture but with a certain uniform thickness. Later, the second concrete layer will be projected. It is not convenient for too much time to elapse between the application of both layers of concrete, preferably to be applied the same day or the next day. Once the concreting of one side is complete, the alignment and plumbing elements placed on the opposite side can be removed and the concreting sequence can begin on it. The concreting 
may also be applied by pouring using a suitable formwork system. Once all the walls have been projected with concrete, we will proceed with the preparation of stairs and slab panels. Armour separators are placed on each of the slab panels on their lower side. The assembly of the set of girders and post shores are made either traditional or pre-armed with any system type such as Mechanoflex or similar. Then the formwork with shuttering boards or phenolic boards will be placed according to needs and then we will proceed to cleaning and application of formwork removing products. Next, a thick layer of concrete, 50 millimeters thick, is poured over the formwork of fluid consistently and simultaneously the floor panels are placed. The panels must be submerged in the fresh paste until they are supported by their spaces. It is very important to remember that in the case that the building has more than one height, a space of at least 60 millimeters must be left between the panels of the floor and the wall to give continuity to the concrete face floor to floor. However, this should not be done on the roof floor to avoid thermal bridging where the wall and roof slab joints are butted. To finish, the compression layer will be poured, which may be the concrete used from the plant. The same procedure in the execution of slabs will be applied to the ramps and stair landings. Once the entire building has been concreted, its envelope integrates the thermal and acoustic insulation, sealing and complying with the habitability standards all buildings must have. It is now when the building is ready to continue growing in height, placing the vertical and horizontal panels of the next floor, following a process analogous to the one previously completed. On the compression layer of the roof, we can place any type of finish commonly used, as well as asphalt sheets and ceramic tiles. Finally, the entire building is ready to apply the coatings defined in the project, allowing, in principle, any type of material for its finish.